Hey, how's it going, boys? What is up? Source back once again for yet another Subtex video thingy. Um, so, I am late. Yes, nothing new. I am a day late because of, uh, you know, FF14 and uh, Impressions is gonna be late for a day as well because FF14, because my sub is ending, gonna play that thing before we end. So, yes. <laughs> but, anyways. We have uh, sub ticks again. That is uh, all the way until October 28. So there's still a long time more for you to decide whether or not you want to buy it or not. Yep. You can probably wait all the way. Uh, wait, when is the thing ending? Yeah, you can wait uh, near the end or something. The last day. Yeah, you could do that. But, uh, anyways. For this specific ticket is they did not really add like massive amount of uh, or any really crazy uh, like amount of uh, new characters or anything that isn't really like only one new summon <laughs> which is Galleon if I recall correctly so they only added like Galleon I don't think they added any new summons besides that only Galleon is in here uh, the rest should be the same from what I've seen. If I recall correctly, Wilnas was already in there last uh, last subtext. So, yeah, so no summons to be bothered unless. Well, I'll mention it later. But uh, so for this specific one, I'm only going to mention about the upcoming Guild War, which is Win Favorite. So I'm only going to mention about the. Because usually I'll, always, I'll mention like any new characters that get added in into the pool whether they'll be good or not to have or whatever those shit blah blah blah, blah. But because we do not have any new characters As you can see these are literally the characters that was already in last subtix And we already have all the characters they did added in last subtix Again, they did, the new ones is supposed to be Noise and uh, Greya Which we do not have in this banner Unfortunately, so yeah, we do not have any new characters. Um, we're just gonna talk about the win f uh, for win favorite guild war. So first of all, I'm just gonna say that the uh, the subtix choices for this win favorite stuff, especially for guild war, is not the best ones. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are very very small amount of characters. That can only be used for the upcoming Guild War. Very, like, a very selective few. Unlike, you know, like, Water, you know, there's so many characters that you can actually make use of. <laughs> you know, for example. Heck, I would, it would even say that even the likes of, uh, maybe the likes of, uh, Dark or Fire do have, like, way more, uh, how do I say, selection to make, you know, for example. But, uh, so if you want, that's only, I think I can only say that there's only like one really good one when it comes to like OTK, which is obviously Nataku. I'm just kidding. Anaku, <laughs> Nataku sucks ass. What are you, what are you thinking? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Maybe Nataku is probably the best character to have in this entire uh, subtext, right? Just pick him. All right. End of the video. Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> but, um, all right. So... The first one I would say is Vera. Vera is probably one of the better ones to get, especially if you're lacking in, I don't know, if you do not have Grand Naru, for example, you do not have like Sleepy Potato, you need like at least something to help you in OTK. Vera is definitely one good, uh, good example, just because that she can debuff and she can nuke after Ogi as well. So she's uh, pretty nice. So if you need uh, some sort of uh, debuff you can always just you know either do that or do that it's either one of these buttons I mean this one this button I mean like you you can debuff right you see this it helps if you need an extra nuke like uh, if you do if you think you have not you're not doing enough damage you can also press this if you need but if you really need a debuff yeah just use the S2 which is already good enough so that's that's kind of nice. Uh, that's all she is to it. And uh, yeah, her weapon is relatively decent too, actually, if I recall correctly. If you kind of need for, you know, 
OTK stuff. Yeah, it's alright. Our weapon is relatively decent if you do can if you can actually get it to full limit break, obviously. But if not, it's okay. You don't really need that. Especially if you're Magna, more reason for you to not care about that. Okay. Um uh, other notable one obviously is not Nataku. Um Alright, I know this is probably gonna gonna shock a lot of you, but uh, I'm gonna have like <laughs> Uh, honorable mention here. Uh, I'll I'll save that for the end. Though. <laughs> but um, I remember I used to uh, recommend Lens a lot before. But I in it's like at this time of uh twenty like you know this time of age already twenty end of nearly end of twenty twenty one. For the 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 perks that what Lancelot Win Lancelot has is a little bit too weak now. So. These days, I wouldn't really recommend him anymore, so I really suggest you to not bother with this guy. Ulysses as well, I mean Ulysses is kind of nice, but I don't think she's really good for like Guild War, full auto cast stuff kind of thing. Same goes with Petra. Uh, Birdman has that problem as well, but uh, yeah, honestly, I think if you, if you do one, there are some situations where you can kind of make use of Birdman for like Nightmare 95 for example, but I wouldn't really say so. Carmelina is fucking shit. Sand is very outdated. Her less can still definitely still can be used for like the likes of Nightmare 95 Burst, for example. You could probably still try and do that if you so desire. So her less can definitely still be used until today if you so desire. What her less is is basically she allows you to have overdrive assassin for the whole team. So that's uh that's for you to uh, set up if you actually do want to have it to just you know have overdrive set up because you know if you didn't know that um, Guild War bosses tends to have very very long overdrive uh, sessions uh, durations yeah I don't know what you call it but that uh, overdrive seems to last freaking forever so having this is really not a big deal you know it's not like she's not like those you know like characters like Esser for example where you actually just put like a debuff that forces it to be in break mode for example or whatever you know that kind of shit so yeah she's not like that type of character unfortunately but yeah so it's just overdrive assassin but it works because you know overdrive lasts fucking forever um next one would be definitely not so i would even say so is actually okay but Unfortunately, she is not that great because you need to, you know, it's like you need to, uh, plus it's green and then you need to aim and shit, blah, blah, blah and stuff. Because, you know, this requires you to aim. So she is in a very, very, like, uh, selective uh, scenario, like for proving grounds or some sort. Gawain is, can be kind of used, but not really. So I wouldn't really suggest that. Um, Yoda as well, Melissa Bell not really as well, Korra is a little bit too dated, Urius is only for hard raids, Morigna not really as well, Florence though, okay so for, for Florence, there's a really high chance that she might actually be useful because her first skill is pretty darn nice, even though it lasts freaking forever, like the cooldowns, is it is actually 10 turns if you're wondering, but like her first skill is pretty nice because you have this and this too is pretty notable because this too is 100% like meaning whenever these land, these two lands it just means that sh they should not multi-attack at all the target should not multi-attack and this lasts for 5 turns so it's pretty nice so technically you have 5 turns downtime so it is pretty good though I would definitely say this is actually pretty nice and uh you get extra. You do get extra forty percent uh, earth cut. I mean, the the switch is kind of pointless, but it's whatever. And she is another type of uh, crest summon. I mean, uh, with crest character, crest focus character. So it's not too bad. Uh, at the same time, because uh, the next one I'm going to mention or or include is going to be similar to what uh, she's actually providing as well. So because you know she is a crest character, right? Unfortunately, you won't be able to use this because you do need to aim if I recall correctly because it says yeah to win ally So you need to aim at a character. So this will not be uh, selectable in full auto unfortunately 
But yeah, she's still gonna be nice, and then you get, you know... This one is kinda like whatever, honestly, but uh... The debuffs, and you know, she does dispel, and then you do get extra, um... You do get extra uh, crest on herself, so it's pretty nice. But the other one though, if you do, you plan to get her as well, you can also... The other one will be really, really good, which is obviously Tiamat. Tiamat is probably... I would say a very 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 good pick if you haven't gotten her yet and especially if you want to use for like full auto and stuff so if you're not especially when like one of the weaker side of things Tiamat is going to help you a lot especially if she's full moon break just because that she provides you a free seraphic weapon in other words you do not need to slot in a seraphic weapon if you are planning to use her because of her this thing I mean it doesn't really show that but um, let me just go to her version where is she there there so this is what it's supposed to look like at level 100 but uh yeah so basically you just do not need to use or equip the seraphic weapon in your grid at all just have her and she will automatically get 20 percent if i recall correctly this should provide 20 percent uh and then she does have a lot of uh very useful full auto skills because you know you do get uh, extra buff you do get extra charge bar gain and then once this gets upgraded you do get this as well so that's pretty nice she can be your debuffer she gives you crest as well and then you do get this as well you know you get free uh you know free veil and shit so you can technically kind of use lumberjack instead of uh the likes of relic buster yeah Okay, um, yeah, pretty much it, cause uh, you know that's that's how that's how Tiamat is. She's pretty good. Saving uh, one slot on weapon is actually pretty nice. All right, so that's how Tiamat is. Okay, so next one will be who's the next one? Let's see. Okay, Scat isn't really that great. Stan Eliza is also kind of dated as well. Lena too. So number one. The number one honorable mention I would say is like, dude, as much as I fucking meme him, meme him on his video, he does have some use very likely during Guild War. Very, very small uh, niche use that you can kind of use because, you know, he does have Undying. He does provide, and then if you full auto with him, he does gonna provide this as well. You could actually potentially use him for Nightmare 95 as well if you so think. So, you know, if uh, if you need like extra echo bonus or whatever on your Naru or whatever shit, blah blah blah. Because you know, you he does have tri guaranteed triple and he does have extra uh, echo on by himself as well. So, because you know, whenever you press his S1, he's automatically in critical HP already. So that's gonna be good. And then, uh, yeah, he does provide, this one is 10%, uh, I think 10% Amplify, and this is 20% Echo. I don't really remember the exact amount, but I think it's around that much. So you can actually get this up to your entire party, so it definitely does help in a way. But at the same time, besides Nightmare 95, you can kind of actually make use of him in Nightmare 100 150, just because in full auto, it kind of works with him. But the problem is you are giving extra diamonds to... The boss as well if you're full autoing so just keep that in mind the other thing is that you know he 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 can actually dispel as well and he can dodge all attacks every time any ogis wants but the problem is that you know for say for example if the boss have a lot of multi attacks or whatever or aoe's a lot this thing essentially this dodge thing will always get debuffed immediately so it's, i wouldn't really say it's the greatest unfortunately but yeah but uh, even though he has this stupid uh, V2 shit meme, but at least this this first one though, this one turn cut one turn cut to skill cooldowns when a foe uses a special attack, at least this is somewhat useful because you know, the uh, Guild War bosses does do their special attack quite often in a way. Obviously not as often as the likes of Far, but it is often enough to actually make use of this. So it is gonna be somewhat helpful in a way. Yeah, so. Yeah, honorable mention for sure. Even though I hate him so much. <laughs> um, Metera, I wouldn't really say is that great either. Fina is a little bit inconsistent too, because she has like very very clunky uh skill set. Even though she's very catered towards having triple attacks or whatever, 
Uh, noise is uh, kind of like a Tabina version, you know, like fire Tabina. I mean, not like, well, kind of like even limited seasonal Tabina as well. But like, yeah, he's kind of like that, but it's not that great to be honest. So you can kind of ignore him. Sutera is mostly for proving ground slash tower of Abel kind of setup. So I wouldn't really say Sutera is gonna be that great. And then Nectar though, Nectar is gonna be pretty good for Nightmare 95 if I recall correctly. Because I think someone did share to me uh, his there's a setup somewhere for Nightmare 95 with this guy, but I mean this guy does have uh, he does have onslaught and then he does also have uh, break assassin with his S2. He only needs to have 100% uh, uh, charge bar in order for you to do that, but you can technically do that you know for for free during uh, what's that the likes of. You know, assault time or even the likes of uh, specific, like the, um, you know, if you have your FO buff or whatever in your crew skills thingy, you could actually essentially get to 100% bar with that, uh, with that help as well. So you could do that, yeah, you know, but that's kind of like the way he is. You just basically get the, the assassin thing, blah, blah, blah. You know how assassin shit works, you know, you know, with uh, fucking... Uh, Tag team and shit, blah blah blah, wrestler. You you get the drill, right? <laughs> so that's why he's gonna be nice for Nightmare 95. So next one will be Unread. Unread will be another notable character, just because that she's gonna be your pseudo budget version of Summer Kova. You know, if you want to do like that, uh, you know the the wrestler setup with Grand Naru shit, and if you do not have Korwa, Unread can be your character because Unread does provide double strike. <laughs> And it's just she just gives double strike. That's that's about it. <laughs> the only set, the only difference between that and uh, you know the likes of Summer Kowa is that Summer Kowa does provide uh, a little bit extra attack, and I think multi attack if I recall correctly. I don't really remember exact the exact buff, and then you also get like a big chunk of uh, damage cap. So yeah, it's not it, it, obviously Unreal is not going to be that that tier, right? But at least. She does provide you double strike and then she does also gives you some minor buffs if you so desire. She does debuff too if you so need to. Just keep in mind that if you're using Unread to debuff, make sure you do not put miss on your MC because if I recall correctly, her debuff does not stack with NC. The the miserable miss is should be the same the same type. So just keep that in mind. If you want to use like use like armor break or some other shit. I don't know. Something like that, yeah. But yeah, just TLDR Unread is your budget Korwa. Summer Korwa, yeah. That's that's pretty much it. Okay. So uh, last but not least is uh, Vera, which I already mentioned in the beginning. But Safira is another clunky type of character. So I really honestly think you should just ignore her altogether. Not really the greatest. So yes, that's all the characters there is for, I would say that is notable for Guild War. There is somewhat that maybe you can consider if you need, you know, whichever things I said earlier for your Guild War setup or whatnot. If you still need help, you can always, you know, come on stream or, you know, ask in my Discord server or some shit. But uh, the other ones I probably would uh, obviously mention is like, I'm not going to mention about the fucking uh, weapons, but uh, summons though. I'm probably going to say this for everyone, but like summons, you can ne honestly, you can never go wrong when it comes to like picking a primal summons, obviously. So because... Now that they are permanently adding uh, primal summons into subtics, and if you really want to build into a primal, and you're very very close into a primal, you know, like say you already got all the weapons, for example, you're only missing the summon, you do not have the summon, but you got the stones, all that shit, you're ready to ULB the damn thing, then yeah, by all means, why the fuck not, right? So if you're already in that position, I say just just go for it. I don't think there's really any harm in that. Just go grab, uh, just buy a sub ticks and just go grab it and get the shit over with done. You know, simple as that. You no, know, uh, don't really have to think twice. But um, besides that, yeah, you can't really go wrong with that. Um, other than that, the summons like the upcoming ones obviously is the dragons. So far, we only have two dragons, which is Galleon and Wilnas. But obviously, we are going because they already well introduce dragons to us right and we all know that six fucking elemental dragons so we're definitely going to get like wind dragon next i'm not sure when the hell is going to happen but uh it's probably going to be either 
later this month or next month before Guild War. I don't know, shit like that, blah blah blah. And then we are probably gonna get more, like maybe Dark Fidel or whatever, Dragon soon, blah blah blah, all the shit. So, moving forward, right? When it comes to all this subtic, uh, subtic stuff, they're probably gonna add that in there. I'm gonna say that uh, any of these dragons, if you want to pick them, and then if you're like, obviously, if you're, it only works in primal, right? So if you're using primal, and then you, if you want to grab, if you think grabbing any of these dragons may be a bad idea, I highly doubt it is. It's never a bad idea to grab any of these dragons if you want to build your primal up and shit. It's never gonna be a bad idea because. It is essentially going to make your primal a lot stronger. You have to keep that in mind because, you know, you get a much higher modifier in total along with your, you know, if you're using like the double double primal setup or whatever. And then you just add this into your sub sub the for the sub aura summon or whatever. And then done, right? You get much more modifier on top of that. So it's, it's really, really good. So moving forward, whenever they consistently add all these dragons into the sub decks, if you want to grab them, just go grab them it helps no matter what yeah and then but then like for you know like all these specific uh multi attack slash echo ones like zinitra artemis mammoth you know okay maybe you know like for this right out of all the six probably alcat is the worst one <laughs> so i wouldn't really suggest you to bother with alcat unfortunately <laughs> alcat is a fucking meme man okay Okay, it's a goddamn me. <laughs> but if you really want to get for like the uh just for the sake of like the multi-attack stuff, the other elements isn't half bad. Like the red hair is alright, the, the carry breeze is actually okay as well. I then you had you probably see a lot of people also using mammoth for earth these days as well. Artemis a little bit, Zinitra maybe a little bit, but yeah, I don't think these can go wrong as well. If you want to get like one copy or some shit first. I don't see how is that a problem, but the priority is not really in there. You should only like consider all these in like much, much later. Not really like, you know, say, say for example, like you haven't gotten your primal, your primal shit yet. And then you want to think you're thinking that maybe getting these will help you. Probably not. So <laughs> you have to be like in a position where maybe you already have, say, for example, your primal done or something. And then you have like your 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 dragon stuff as well. And then you have your, you know, say for example, if you're Earth, you have your gorilla shit as well. You know, stuff like that. Or like maybe for um for for lights case, right? You'll be using Thor, right? So obviously in that case, you kind of want to go grab Thor first, because Thor, if I recall correctly, is subtakeable. Where the fuck is he? Yeah, that this guy. So like it, that that is for like those few examples, right? So. Before you consider any of these, these ones, you might want to think about this. This this also applies to the crest ones, by the way. But I was obviously I would definitely say that like the crest ones, like Surter, Longji, Dogu, all this stuff has like much much lesser priority compared to the likes of these ones, because you know some of the like the Luca setup these days does consider these characters these types of summons to actually provide more deeps. You know, for their Luca shit, bullshit, blah blah blah, you know, all that stuff. And then, uh, I think out of like all the, the crest summons so far, I think only Longji is the one really being really being used because you know, water is the one really, I would say, really utilizing the whole crest stuff for the most part. Uh, yeah. And I think last but not least, I that's pretty much, uh, mostly it. But uh, I think the last one, besides like the, the, you know, like for Thor and Gorilla, there's also another one called Demon Dream, which is for, for win, which you do get, you do get this and then you also get uh, Jam Effect and also you get, if I recall correctly, you do get something at full limit break, which is Echo, I think. If I recall correctly. I don't know how much was it though. I know you get something good at full limit break. <laughs> But yeah, but those, just remember those ones are not really your, like your super priority or whatnot. So the priority can for summons are always going to be like those certain few, maybe like dragons, primals, uh, summons, or maybe like, you know, say for example, like Typhoon or, you know, like, uh, yeah, Gorilla Freya might actually be good as well. You know, shit like that. 
I I guess even Aphrodite can kind of be good as well, but yeah, Thor, you know, Bonito, shit like that. So only those few are probably the, the summons that I can really mention right now. The rest, I mean, the rest is kind of up to you. So end of the day, just choose whatever you want. You want to choose Nataku as well, just go, go right ahead. It's your money, right? <laughs> so end of the day, that's it. Uh, that's all I can say for now. I'm not really going to mention about Dark Favorite uh, Guild War yet, because it's very, very likely that uh, Dark Favorite Guild Wars is, because Dark Favorite Guild Wars in January, right? There's gonna be more subtics later, so I'm just gonna mention that for that particularly, blah, 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 for that particular Guild War favorite shit, much later, not now. So for now, it's only just gonna be win and some of the summon stuff that I just mentioned earlier. So that's all I can say for now. Sorry it was late again because you know FF14 thing, I've been really busy FF14. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys uh, find this helpful in any way, shape or form. I'll see you guys next time. Okay, on stream. Okay, thanks. Alright, bye-bye. Alright, good night.